Welcome friends to this presentation on lipid chemistry. This is the basics of lipids. Of importance we need to know about the lipoprotein metabolism completely because lipoproteins have been implicated with the development of atherosclerosis and heart attacks. This topic is also important from the student's perspective that a lot of important MCQs can be framed onto this. There's not very much to understand and a lot of questions can be framed about this. This slide, I want you all to look carefully. There are a lot of words which I've used in this slides, and by the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify what these words are and give examples for them because the entire concept of MCQs and understanding comes from these slides. We should know what are fats, fatty acids, what are odd and even chain fatty acids, what is monounsaturated fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, difference between cholesterol, cholesterol esters what are prostaglandins we need to know about phospholipids phospholipids can be glycerophospholipids and sphingophospholipids the glycerophospholipids could be phosphatidylcholine phosphatidylethanolamine phosphatidylinositol you'll get words like surfactant cardiolipins plasmalogens in sphingolipids you will talk about ceramides cerebrocytes globocytes gangliosides and sphingobiline so there's a huge lot of terms that you need to understand and be able to talk about in this presentation. I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. Lipids can be classified as simple lipids, compound lipids and derived lipids. What are simple lipids? Simple lipids are fats. Fats is a combination of fatty acids and glycerol. They are usually liquid in room temperature. When fats are solid at room temperature, they are called wax. Compound lipids are lipids that contain something more then fatty acids and glycerol when you hydrolyze them you get something more phospholipids will give you phosphoric acids and some nitrogenous base glycolipids will contain carbohydrates sulfolipids will contain sulfurs then we have amino lipids and lipoproteins a combination of lipids and proteins now fats consist of fatty acids and glycerols when fatty acid fats are hydrolyzed they give us, they give us fatty acids so fatty acids are derived from fats hence they are called derived lipids as much as the steroids fatty acids can be placed on or classified on a number of situations based on the length they could be short chain fatty acids medium chain long chain and very long chain standard mcq questions you can get is a uh, fatty acid has got so many carbon atoms what is its classification Based on the number of carbon atoms, fatty acids can be classified as odd and even chain fatty acids. Now, it's important to realize that our body does not have uh, the capability of producing odd chain fatty acids. In fatty acid synthesis, two, two molecules of acetyl coenzyme are joined together and every step of elongation produces an even chain uh, fatty acid. For odd chain fatty acids, we require other sources. Important to know that fatty, uh, the odd chain fatty acids, the propionyl coenzyme A gets converted to succinyl coenzyme A and can enter into gluconeogenesis. This is one of the only examples where fatty acids can contribute towards gluconeogenesis. Fatty acids could be saturated or they could be unsaturated having double bonds. Unsaturated fatty acids could be MUFA that is monounsaturated fatty acids or PUFA polyunsaturated fatty acids there is a separate numbering system but they call it from the right to the left that is called the C numbering system and the omega system which comes from the left to the right so based on the omega system there could be the double bond present in the pedalta in the last three carbon that will be called the omega 3 series then you have the omega 6 series and the omega 9 series so that's how carbohydrate uh, fatty acids can be classified based on the location of the double bonds now the basic structure of the fatty acids would uh, of the of fats would be a triacyl glycerol normally called as triglycerides it consists of a glycerol molecule the backbone and to this there are three fatty acids esterified to the OH group. So this is a mono uh, monoacyl glycerol. Glycerol fatty acids are called acyl. So this would be a monoacyl glycerol. 
If two fatty acids are attached, it's called a diacylglycerol. And if three fatty acids are attached, it's called a triacylglycerol or triglycerides as we call it. Now, what are phospholipids? This is a triacylglycerol molecule. If we remove one of the fatty acids, it becomes a diacylglycerol. To the OH on the third position, if we attach a phosphoric acid, this molecule is a phosphatidic acid. A triacylglycerol, remove one of the fatty acids, diacylglycerol, to that add a phosphoric acid, this is a phosphatidic acid. This is the basic molecule. To this, a nitrogenous base can be added. Nitrogenous base can be choline, then it will be called phosphotidyl choline. It could be ethanolamine, it will be called phosphotidyl ethanolamine. It could be inositol, then it will be called phosphotidyl inositol. Now, dipalmitile lecithin is a term which you will hear very commonly, otherwise it is called surfactant. It reduces the surface tension. It is usually seen in the lungs. Because the surface tension of the alveoli reduces, it opens up and that aids in lung maturity and the ability of the lungs to breathe in and to uh, carry out oxygen uh, trans gas exchanges across the alveolar membrane. Now, if the surfactant is not there, if dipalmental lecithin is not there, then the lungs will not open and the child will not be able to breathe. This is a condition called respiratory distress syndrome. The term dipalmital lecithin sounds to be very complicated. Let us try to simplify it. Now, this is a glycerol molecule. It has two fatty acids, diacylglycerol. It has it's got a phosphoric acid, phosphatidic acid. To that, this nitrogenous base choline is attached. So, that is lecithin. A glycerol molecule, two fatty acids, a phosphoric acid, phosphatidic acid. To this, if a choline is attached, then this molecule, phosphatidyl choline, is otherwise called lecithin. Then what is dipalmitoyl? Di means two, palmitoyl means palmitic acid. So what we are saying is a glycerol molecule with two palmitic acids, one phosphoric, uh, one phosphoric acid, and a choline. This molecule is dipalmitoyl lecithin. Good. Let us go to another structure called cardiolipins. Before understanding cardiolipins, let us first identify this structure. This structure has got two fatty acids and a glycerol molecule, two fatty acids and a phosphoric acid. What is this molecule? Phosphatidic acid. Again, this is another molecule, a uh, two fatty acids, glycerol molecule, a phosphoric acid. So, what is this? Dipalmitic acid, diphosphatidic acid. This is a three carbon structure with three OH. These two OH are esterified to the phosphoric acid. So, what is this? Glycerol. Now, put all the three together. What is the molecule we have got? diphosphatidyl glycerol. This is cardiolipin. Cardiolipin is an integral part of a lot of cell membranes, especially in the mitochondria. Now, there are a group of enzymes called the phospholipase. Phospholipase belongs to the hydrolase group. They act on specific sites and bring about the breakage in the bonds. Okay? You have a phospholipase A1 which acts on the first carbon. You have a phospholipase A2 which acts on the second carbon. You have a phospholipase C which acts on the phosphoric acid. You have a phospholipase D which acts between the phosphoric acid and the polar head. And you have a phospholipase B which acts either on the first position or the second position. So this again becomes a multiple choice question. Phospholipase A1 acts on which carbon? Phospholipase A2 acts on which carbon? So, there could be multiple choice questions. More importantly, a lot of snake venoms have got these phospholipases which bring about these hydrolysis and bring about a hemolytic reaction, especially the viper group of uh, snakes. 
this molecule we are all aware is the glycerol molecule there is another molecule which is very similar to the glycerol molecules in lot many aspects there is an OH group here there is an OH group here in place of this OH group we have a NH2 so this is a amine containing alcohol and there is a slightly long chain attached to one of the carbons in, in opposition to this H we have a longer side chain this molecule is called sphingosine sphingosine is an al alcohol just like glycerol which also combines with the fatty acids to form various structures which we are going to discuss about just get the impression that glycerol and sphingosine are quite similar in a nature to each other except that sphingosine is an amino alcohol that's a point that we should understand now sphingolipids can be called as glycero sphingolipids glyco sphingolipids what does glyco sphingolipids mean this is sphingolipid containing glyco which is carbohydrates it could also be a phospho sphingolipids sphingo stands for sphingomyer sphingosine which is the alcohol which we were talking about just now so we need to understand what is a ceramide what is a cerebroside what is a globoside what is a ganglioside there are four terminologies sounds very daunting when we talk about it right now but if we split it up properly and understand it step by step it will become easier to understand this is the sphingosine molecule this is the OH OH and the amino sugar and to that if a fatty acid is attached that is we have the alcohol and a fatty acid attached that is called a ceramide alcohol plus fatty acid ceramide like, like we had the monoacylglycerol, the diacylglycerol, the triacylglycerol. Here we are having, we are calling it a ceramide. To this ceramide, if we attach a carbohydrate, that is called a cerebroside. Ceramide, syngosine plus fatty acid. Ceramide, that is alcohol plus fatty acid plus a sugar is called a cerebroside. Just remember the nucleoside and the nucleotide. Nucleoside contains the carbohydrate. Similarly, the cerebroside contains the carbohydrate. Now, based on the carbohydrates, it could be glucose, it could be galactose. If it is glucose, it is a glucosyl ceramide. If it is a galactose, it is galactosyl ceramide. Right? Now, if the carbohydrate is a bit complex, just not a glucose or a galactose, but a chain of carbohydrates, then this forms a globoside. If it's not one carbohydrate but multiple carbohydrates attached to the chain, this is called a globoside. Globoside will be a sphingosine, will be the fatty acid and the long chain of carbohydrates. Somewhere in this long chain, if you have a silic acid residue. What's a silic acid residue? A silic acid residue consists of a 9 carbon containing carbohydrate called N acetyl neuramic acid. So, if the globoside contains N acetyl neuramic acid, this is called a ganglioside. There are a lot of inborn errors of metabolism which affect the ganglioides. So, let's begin again. What is this? You have the OH group, you have the NH group, you have the OH group. This is sphingosine. To sphingosine, if we attach a carbohydrate, this is called a, let's revise. Good. This is called a ceramide. To a ceramide, if we attach a carbohydrate, this is called a cerebroside. If the cerebroside consists of complex carbohydrate, this is called a globoside. If the globoside consists of N acetyl muramic acid, then it is called a ganglioside. Then the next classification was sphingophospholipids. We learned about the phospholipids. We learned about the phospholipids that time we said that there is a glycerol molecule. To that there are two fatty acids attached diacetylglycerol to that we add a phosphoric acid that's called a phosphatidic acid and to that we add a nitrogenous base and we call it as a phospholipids 
This structure is also very similar. You have the alcohol which is sphingosine. You have the fatty acid. You have the phosphoric acid and you have the nitrogenous base. So this constitutes a sphingophospholipid. Very similar to the glycerophospholipid. The last structure of importance we need to know is the structure of cholesterol. Now, the cholesterol structure is called the CPPP ring. C followed by three P's. Okay, look at this molecule. You see that this is a pentane structure. This is a 5 carbon pentane. It is a cyclic, it is closed ring. So, it is a cyclopenteno, right? The C and the P stands for cyclopenteno. Now, this structure of three uh, hexagonal uh, carbon rings which are unsaturated, this is called the phenanthrene ring. Now, if you have a look over here, you have one, two, three. This is the phenanthrene ring. And here you can see an unsaturated bond. So, that's the per hydro. So let's add all these three, three things together, cyclo, penteno, perhydro, phenanthrene ring. This is the structure of cholesterol. Again, cyclo, penteno, perhydro, meaning that there's unsaturated bonds and phenanthrene ring. This is the structure of, of cholesterol and it's very important to know the structure because this is the only structure in the body that cannot be broken down. This ring structure cannot be broken down by the body. We can add chains and modify the side chain and different modifications of the side chain produces all the hormones starting from cortisol to testosterone to progesterone. You name the sex hormones and all of them are cholesterol based. Right. But this ring cannot be broken. And the importance of this is Whatever cholesterol comes into the body needs to be excreted out, we cannot metabolize it. So if your input is more than the output, this cholesterol will keep accumulating, get deposited in the blood vessels and lead to a condition called atherosclerosis. So this is in nutshell about the chemistry of carbohydrate, of lipids. Thank you.